be with you. Welcome everyone, a brave but yet small group of people today on our uh, wonderful winter weather, northern Wisconsin weather this morning. I appreciate every face this morning, so thank you for coming. I have, uh, I have just a couple of things that I want to announce this morning. They are in your bulletin, but I want to try to clear up any, clarify any questions or anything that's going on. So, um, first of all, just a, again, an invitation for the midweek Lenten services, the soup suppers, they're going, I, I actually attended the very first one this last Wednesday night and I thought it was wonderful. So I encourage those to, uh, to come and attend as well. Again, we begin our soup supper at 515 and then we worship at or around 6 p.m. So, uh, really the first major change, all right, then the details need to be worked out, is that we are going to change things up a bit for the calendar year of 2023. Um, there will be no Saturday evening service this year at all. What we are going to do is, is that we are going to have a midweek service on Wednesday evenings. This is going to be something that will be there and be available all year, not just in the summer. So the first midweek Wednesday service is going to begin the Wednesday after Easter. So that's going to be April 12th. That service is going to be at 6 p.m. And again, it's going to be something that we're going to put on the website and tell folks about um, and hopefully encourage more people to attend that find themselves extremely busy on weekends. We felt that this was something that should better serve the community at large. So again, 6 p.m. Unfortunately, our Wednesday evening services going forward from Easter will not include soup, <laughs> okay? but we will worship and it will be a full service with Holy Communion as well for those wishing to attend. So I want you to make note of that and also share that information with your neighbors and folks and that type of thing as well that we're going to offer that service in the middle of the week. Also, and this one is a little bit more complicated, but it's something I do believe that at least for me is the very first time that's ever happened. And that is, is that we've made one change to our Holy Week worship schedule. So if you look at that in your, in your worship guide, you will find that the Easter vigil that is normally at 5.30 is going to be now at 7 p.m. And the reason for that is, is that we are going to do a complete and entire Easter vigil. Now, most of you probably don't know, but when done in its entirety, that's one of, if not the longest Lutheran worship service there is because Easter Vigil was normally the traditional evening where adults were baptized in the church, and they used the season of Lent in preparation for that baptism. Well, I'm very happy to say that we are going to have an adult baptism. And not only an adult baptism, but we're also going to celebrate Holy Communion. And to celebrate Holy Communion at the, the Vigil, it needs to be Easter which means the sun needs to have set. And you probably wonder why that is. There was evening and there was morning, one day. In ancient times, the day started at sunset, not at sunrise. So, knowing that the sun will set that day at 734, we will begin our worship service with a new fire outside, and hopefully the weather will cooperate. We will move in. We will hear the stories. We will celebrate a baptism, and we will celebrate together Holy Communion as well. Now, also, this is not something where it's an and or. I'm looking for everybody on Sunday morning as well. So just because you come Saturday night, I still want to see you on Easter Sunday. But this is something that is new for me. I don't know that it's ever been done here. But if you're reading that correctly, it will be the Easter visual with Holy Communion. And um, I think it goes without saying that I'm very pleased and I'm very excited about it as well. So I hope you come and join us that evening. So as far as uh, the service today, that's all the announcements that I have. Does anyone here have anything they'd like to share that has to do with our Christian family here or the community at large. Very well. If you're visiting with us today, everything that you need for worship today is, was given to you as you came into the sanctuary. It's all in order. It's all there. 
Also, it's printed every week. So if there's something there that you see that you like, you want to take home, you want to write something on the calendar, we encourage you to take the worship guide with you as we simply recycle them each and every week. So uh, again, everything is there. And as always, when we gather, we celebrate Holy Communion. And we'd like you to know that all are welcome to the Lord's table here. You'll come forward and receive the host from me, and then moving left or right, you will receive the wine by dipping the host into the wine or receive the wine in individual glass. If you do so in individual glass, you'll see on each side, there is also a waste bin for your glass when you have finished communing. We will do one side of the church at the time, as is, our, as is our tradition, and there is grape juice offered in both, the small, the small chamber and the chalice, and also clearly marked on the tray of individual glasses. But the emphasis, again, is that all are welcome to the Lord's table. So that's all the announcements that I have. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship a gracious and loving God. We begin our worship this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's promise of mercy. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open us to a future in which we can be changed and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Our gathering song today, O Jesus, Joy of Loving Hearts, ELW 658, and today we will sing verses 1, 2, and 4, and I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. <coughs>
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out our transgressions. Against you, you alone, have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Purge us with hyssop and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Let us hear you join, gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from our sin. Blot out our iniquities. Lord be with you. Please join me in the prayer. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you quench our thirst and wash away our sin. Give us this water always. Bring us to drink from the well that flows with the beauty of your truth through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Exodus, in which Israel complains that they have no water. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so. 
in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Manasseh and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Let us read the psalm for today, Psalm 95, responsively. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. For you, Lord, are a great God, and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the heavens of the earth, the heights of the hills are all yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture, and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. There your ancestors tested me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. Indeed, I swore in my anger, they shall never come to my rest. The second reading is from Romans, in which Paul boasts in God about our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For a while we were weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, although perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that, while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Please rise as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I invite you to please be seated. Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, 
How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would ask him, and he would, he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flock drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshiper will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with your love, our minds with your thoughts, and our mouths with your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To say that was a lot is an understatement. It's a lot, and there's a lot there. So let's see if today we can break it down just a little bit. When I look at the Old Testament story and I look at the Israelites, I don't know what it's like to be that thirsty. Now, I've shared with you in times growing up, we didn't have a lot. But you know what? Living on a farm, going hungry or going thirsty, never happened. You might not have always liked what you ate, and you might have ate the same thing two or three times a week, depending upon what happened to be growing in the garden at the time or what you could glean and bring in, but you were always full. You, were always, you always had well from the water, and in my case, I had milk from the cooler. I even had something a little extra that a lot of people that I went to school with didn't have. And as a young man, you take that for granted. You take it for granted, because it's always there. And in my case, this is a little bit of a confession, you can even afford to be fussy. And I was. I was a fussy eater. Fortunately for me, I ate enough to, I guess, grow up without a whole bunch of, of uh, issues. But boy, I could have done better. Uh, it, but things change as you get older. And the one thing that changed, and by the way, when I tell you this, there has never been a time where I can say where I ever lacked for food or I ever lacked for water. But there was one particular time in my life that was life-changing and I never forgot. I enlisted right out of high school. I was in boot camp for about three weeks. I was sent home. It didn't last long. I was sent home at that time on a 3F medical. But I had three weeks of living on military food. <laughs> now, there were two things that my mother made that I absolutely refused to eat. One was her chicken ca or tuna casserole, and the other one was her chop suey. And after two weeks, I would have given you a month's pay for either one. So when this little farm boy came home, he was no longer fussy, but always thankful and always thankful for the people who prepared the food if I didn't have to cook it. That was a life-changing event. In the Old Testament lesson, we tend to wonder and we're critical of the Israelites. We don't know what it's like to be hungry in the desert, okay, and to complain for just plain something to eat. We don't know what it's like to be so thirsty that you're afraid that you're going to perish. At least I don't. Maybe you do, but I don't. And so we keep reading these texts, and we, we look at them like whining children. And Moses even approaches them with the same attitude. Why did you give me these people to shepherd out of Egypt? Because even though they were in slavery, now they're having second thoughts. Well, you know what? Yeah, we were slaves, but we never went hungry, and we never went thirsty, and you brought us out here to die. And yet at the same time, I can't be critical of them because I don't know what it's like to be that hungry. I don't know what it's like to be that thirsty. And yet, through trial, through tribulation, through individual suffering, God once more sets Moses forth and said, I will take care of my people. But the emphasis here is, is that I am doing it. And your well-being, your very life is in my hands, and I, your Father in heaven, will see to your needs. Moses struck the rock, and the rock gave up water. And an entire nation was no longer thirsty. The point of the story is much like what Paul talks about us, talks to us about in Romans. 
And that is, is that when we run short of things in life, when we have to go through trial and tribulation in life, it is those gifts from God that sustain us and bring us through. And that is justified by faith, as Paul says. The most important thing is, is that when we're here, we reside in the peace of God. Now the question can be asked, what is God's peace? What does that mean to each and every one of us? God's peace is that which allows us to see struggles, to see persecution, to see hard times, to see those types of struggles where it builds. It builds character. And out of that character comes hope. Because no matter what we experience, when we live without hope, we have nothing. And God gives us that hope to live in hope that the day will come that all this won't matter anymore. That all of this won't matter, but yet we stand in glory with him. This is the living water that Jesus is talking about to the Samaritan woman. That to understand that living water standing in front makes everything else, the trips to the well, the struggle for, for food, okay? Her... We don't know a lot about her marital issues, but we do know there was, a, there was enough of it. Okay? And yet at the same time, all of these life struggles is put into perspective with the man that stands in front of her. The Word of God. The living Word of God in front of her. The living water poured into her. And this is what he's trying to explain. When you have this, you have all you need. And in having all that, it allows us to live life, gain from those experiences, gain in confidence and trust in the hope. Now this hope, this peace, doesn't guarantee that things will be easy here. But they are there for us to continue to live and to live boldly in the name of Jesus. To go forward and to share that. You know, there are those that would say that we live in extraordinary times. We do. We just came out of two, two and a half to three years of something that nobody saw coming. We live in a time where we think that a, a country cannot be more divided than what it is. Well, I'll tell you what, that's happened before. There's sickness. There's people dying of hunger. There's people dying of thirst. All of these things have happened before. But the one thing that holds us together is living in that peace of God and answering the call of Jesus to do what we can to see to these needs, even in and through our own persecution, our own suffering, to do that. Now, I can only speak for myself. I never, ever, ever, ever interject anybody else. But it's those things in life that this has carried me through. There have been financial issues, okay? There have been all kinds of struggles with family members. You know, our personal relationships with one another, they're the hardest things we do. And sometimes it's the one thing that shakes us right to the very root of our faith tree. But is that peace that has been given to us through faith that we live in, understanding what is the most important thing, and that just as Moses struck the rock, God will take care of this too in his way and in his time. And it's those experiences and those wis that wisdom is that wi what we share with one another. I can't help but mention this. Eh, he's one of my, my all-time favorite people. Okay? But... There was a news article, actually, an interview this week, and they were interviewing William Shatner. Now, if you don't know who William Shatner is, that, for lack of a better way of describing it, that is the original James T. Kirk of Star Trek. He's lived an amazing life. I believe he's well in his 90s now. And he said, you know, he said it's a shame that when you live this long, and he says you've amassed this type of wisdom and experiences and everything to share, and you die, and you're done sharing. And yet, 
That's not how it works. It isn't how it works. That wisdom, those experiences, build the character in us. Give us the hope. Now, I want to make clear, he wasn't speaking in a faithful or spiritual manner. He kept it pretty straight and narrow. But his words were nonetheless powerful. And this is the type of perseverance and the struggles that we go through that builds these type of things that we share with one another in obedience to our Lord and to live life always looking at and benefiting from the peace of God within us. Because all this, all this will someday be gone. This man that stands before you will someday be gone. But it is that hope to stand in glory with Jesus that pushes us through each and everything in our life. Not only through the struggles and tribulations, but also adding to the joy of life. Living in Christ in the joy of life and sharing that joy with one another. When it starts there, no matter how hard times get, all doable in Christ because we have the peace of God and we live in that hope. That is ours. This is the water where you'll never thirst. This is the bread where you'll never hunger. This is what this is our message. This is our gift. It's that which we have to share. That when things look the darkest, we still have Christ. We still have the gift of faith. And we still have hope with God's peace. May that ever be the case in each and every day of your life. Amen. Our hymn of the day, Come to Me, All Pilgrims Thirsty, ELW 777, and today we will sing verses 1, 3, and 4, and I invite you to rise as you're comfortable.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 14 of your worship guide. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all in need. Each petition will end with, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond with, hear our prayer. Lord, let your church on earth justified and reconciled through Jesus Christ, be bold solely in its proclamation of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, make us faithful dwellers of this earth, caring for its waterways and for its creatures. Lord, in your mercy, lead the nations of the world away from the wickedness of sin and evil and toward the light of love and peace in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give the water of life to those who are thirsty for love, for peace, and for belonging. Bring healing and peace for those who suffer in any way. We now lift those on our hearts, whether aloud or silent. Lord, in your mercy, lead and embolden this congregation in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, we thank you for the witness and testimony of the saints who have gone before us into eternal life. Let us boast in the hope that they have shared, a hope that does not disappoint. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the peace with one another as you and your neighbor are comfortable.
Lord's peace to everyone worshiping with us at home today. After you have finished sharing the peace, I invite you to be seated. And as we receive our offering and prepare the Lord's table, I invite you to join in singing Bread of Life from Heaven. I invite you to join me in the prayer found on the top of page 17. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need, through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. The gift of God for the people of God, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. All has been made ready, all are welcome. Our Lord and Savior invites us to come. Please be seated.
I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have now received, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please join me in the prayer. O oh God, you made us from the dust of the earth, now filled and nourished with the body and blood of your Son. Raise us up and help us turn toward you with open hearts, beholding your glory, that by your grace we may receive everlasting life. Amen. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you all, now and forever. Amen. Our sending him today, praise the one who breaks the darkness, ELW 843. Our Lenten journey continues. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.